everybody, I'm at Jacksonville University. Today we're going to be measuring the dissolved oxygen levels of our St. John's River. Two ways oxygen can get into our water is by underwater plants or phytoplankton photosynthesizing and atmospheric oxygen being driven into the water by wave action, whether it's boats, wind, or rain. When scientists measure dissolved oxygen levels, they use a unit of measurement called parts per million ppm. To ensure a healthy biodiversity in the river, you want at least 4 ppm. This means that for every million molecules of water, most aquatic organisms need at least 4 molecules of oxygen to thrive. Different aquatic species have different dissolved oxygen needs. Remember, gill breathers do not breathe water. They pass water over their gills and what they want are those oxygen molecules. Let's test the dissolved oxygen levels. I collected a river sample earlier and I've filled up my vial. And so all I'm gonna do is just add two tablets into my vial. There will be some overflow of water. I'm gonna cap it and then invert until the tablets dissolve and wait for the color to form. So we've waited until our test tablets dissolved. So now we're gonna compare the color of our test tube to our color comparator and see what our results are for today. And it looks like our dissolved oxygen levels are a four or five ppm, which is good for a healthy biodiversity. But how can dissolved oxygen levels drop to harmful levels? The main way is through algae blooms that we see in our St. John's River. When algae dies, it sinks to the bottom where bacteria grow exponentially to decompose the organic matter. They suck up all the oxygen in the water, which drives the dissolved oxygen levels down to 1 or 2 ppm, resulting in fish kills. Green algae outbreaks in the St. John's are increasing in duration and frequency, threatening our waterways and our health. In the spring and summer of 2019, the St. John's River experienced more than 90 days of outbreaks impacting more than 50% of our river. Hotter temperatures, warming waters, and runoff from frequent rainstorms during the summer could result in even more green muck coating our river. Join St. John's Riverkeeper in preventing excess nutrients from entering into our waterways by limiting fertilizer use, picking up after your pet, maintaining septic tanks, and reaching out to elected officials to demand more protective policies from nutrient pollution. Learn more about the history and impacts of algae blooms on the St. John's River by watching our documentaries and our webinar series, Don't Feed the Algae. Thanks for joining me today to test the dissolved oxygen levels of our St. John's River, and we'll see you again on the river soon.